Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Fallout 4 Edit, or as I'm going to be referring to it, XEdit, to be able to create a basic armor plugin so we can use a piece of armor in game. We'll start out by downloading and installing it. If you've already done that, you can go ahead and skip ahead. Uh, if not, uh, there will be a link down in the description for the Nexus page on where to download. Once you've loaded it up, go to the Files tab, choose the Download Manually, that will then pop up and ask you where you want to save it. I'm going to go ahead and choose my desktop. Uh, this will require a tool to open 7-zip files. WinRAR and 7-zip both do that. If you don't have one of those, you can go to 7-zip.org. There will be a link in the description. Download the tool and install that. Uh, if you need help installing that, there are many tutorials on how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and use WinRAR. Uh, as you can see, there are many, many files in here. I'm going to go open uh, the folder I use for my tutorials, since I've already got one created, it's a temporary area, and I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this one FO4Edit. Once I'm in there, I'm going to select everything in here, drag it out to extract it. Now there's a little prep work that we need to do, which is listed here on the description page for the Fallout 4 editor, uh, which is that you need to rename it. So we're going to go ahead and do that really quick. Now, once that's done, you can double click it, and it'll open up and show you all your plugins that you have installed for Fallout 4. If you did not rename it, it'll be looking at Skyrim. So we don't want that. So we're going to leave it at FO4 Edit so we can load up our fallout4.esm file. Now, a little bit of prep work that you'd want to do to get this all set up. Uh, I've already gone and found the material files that I'm going to need. Actually, I won't need those. Uh, but I also wrote down the paths for all the NIF files that I'm going to be using for the armor. Uh, if you have a ground object, you'll want the path for those. Uh, if you have um, regular first-person view objects, you'll want the separate path for that. Otherwise, you'll just want the path uh, and the file name for the armor pieces that you're going to be using. Uh, from here, I like to always use a vanilla asset um, record just to make it easier so I don't have to copy a whole bunch of data and retype it all. So the one I use is the closed sweater vest, uh, both for the armor record and the armor record. Uh, I refer to them by the armor and armo because that's the way the early versions of XEdit referred to them. Um, now they refer to the armor as armor add-on and the armo as armor. That'll be more apparent here in a minute. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my uh, reference IDs that I have here, uh, or more appropriate, I guess it would be form ID, paste that in, and it'll jump straight to it. So if you look up here, it says Arma, which is where I'm getting Arma from. Uh, we're going to go ahead and tell it to copy as a new record. And it's going to, first time you try to edit uh, anything in here after each restart, it's going to say, are you sure you want to do some editing? Yes, we are. And we're going to give it a name. Uh, we're just going to call this Tutorial AA. We'll stick with the same nomenclature they use, the AA. And we're going to put it in a new file. And we're going to call this Tutorial Armor Test. And it's going to tell us that we need to create it, um, link it to a master of Fallout 4 ESM. Yes. Basically, every plugin always needs that. Uh, we're also going to take our Armo base, which is again the sweater pre or the sweater vest, and we're going to call this one Tutorial Armor uh, AM. And we're going to create a craftable object for that as well. Uh, you don't have to create it craftable. But I hate people that don't. I don't like using the consoles to have to add in pieces. Definitely breaks the immersion. So this is going to be a tutorial armor craftable object. All right. Uh, we're also going to be doing a set of gloves. So we'll actually make a second set of those. Copy them all over again. So tutorial gloves. AA, put that in there, and then we're going to be doing the armor record, uh, tutorial, yeah, gloves, and, and one more craft. 
craftable object for that. It's going to be tutorial gloves CL. All right, now we can go ahead and collapse all this back down. We have our new plugin here, which is very basic if we expand it. Uh, if you have a keyboard with a 10 key, you can highlight just here and hit the star or asterisk. That will expand all of the um, sub areas. If you just use the arrow, it only does one level down. So I want them all. Anyways, first we're going to clean up our armor add-ons. Uh, so from there, uh, since we don't have male models for any of these, these are all going to be female models, uh, I'm going to leave the males alone. If you have both a male and a female, then you will edit your male model to point to your male model. Um, this particular piece is going to have uh, only the body, so I'm going to deselect everything. You can right click and it pops up, select all, select none, or invert. Uh, this does have a body in it, because we're doing uh, the armor, which I actually mislabeled, but we'll fix that in a second. Uh, this does not have the hands, that will be for the gloves, so we'll leave left and right hands off. Um, this kind of uses Under Armour, so we're going to go ahead and check all those. And this does have some topical armor. Um, I'll leave it up to you if you want to use these. Uh, what these do is they set flag saying block off these so that um, your armor record, these over here, will require uh, referencing all of the uh, bipeds that you put in your armo, uh, I'm sorry, armor record. Uh, otherwise, it'll show invisible. If you don't have all of those available for this particular item, uh, it won't show up. And we'll cover that in a little bit. Um, actually, I'm just going to use Under Armour parts. We'll leave that alone. Uh, from here, then we're going to set our female uh, world model, which is why I wrote them down already. So I don't have to go typing them all out. Uh, this is going to be our armor, so it would be this one. And we do have a first person view, so we're going to go ahead and copy that over. And let's see, if we had additional races we want this to be equipable on, so right here we have human race. Uh, if we want it to be usable by other races, we would come down to additional races area, right click, say add. Uh, it then gives you a basic null reference. I'm actually going to add in three really quick. Um, if we highlight one and hit F2, that gives us a nice little drop down over here. I thought I'd make this easier and snap it over. Okay. Oops. And scroll down. And so if we drop it down, it gives us a list of all the different races that are in the game. Uh, this will actually be populated by any additional um, third party mods that you have added when you load up. Uh, since I only loaded the base ESM, it's going to be pretty bare. Uh, so we want the human child race. Not that we expect any children to be wearing it, but just for giggles. Uh, we also have the ghoul race. And we have the ghoul child race. If you look at a lot of the vanilla uh, records, you'll see that those three are on uh, quite a few of those as well. Uh, so we are set with that one. Next we're going to go edit our gloves. Uh, from there we're going to copy our gloves ground object. Uh, actually I'm sorry, that's in a different window. Uh, from here we're just going to copy the gloves. So we get that one and that one. Uh, we actually probably should have changed the gloves here uh, but I don't have a reference for a male world model of gloves. So it's just going to look funky if a male tries to put these on. Actually, we could probably use it on male too, so why not? Let's just leave it alone. And again, we can do the... Actually, instead of having to re-add the additional races, the little trick here is you can control click, so you select multiple records, right click and compare. And if I maximize that back out, so now I have them side by side. Um, our gloves are actually going to be using the left and right hands, so we'll change our biped for that. Oops, and we are not using the pit boy. And for additional races, since I want to copy this whole section over, I can just drag it, and voila, all done. Now we're going to move into our armor. 
um, we have to update the biped so that it matches up uh, and has at least the same number that are in the armor add-on. So we're going to go ahead and uncheck them all. We have body and then under armor. Um, I don't want it to have a fortify charisma magic effect. Uh, you'll notice that some items in vanilla game uh, specify whether they have extra charisma, extra strength, agility, whatnot. Uh, that's where this goes in. Um, I'm not going to detail how to create those. That's a whole different thing way beyond this tutorial. Uh, we do have a ground object, so we're going to go ahead and copy that over really fast. Oops, I'm sorry. That is for the gloves, not for this one. Uh, so we'll leave that sweater vest. Actually, I have a reference that I use for the vault suit, so we're going to go ahead and use that. And down here under keywords, uh, different armors will have different keywords. In this case, it has an MA keyword specifying that it has a filter for the railroad clothing armor, which is the ballistic weave. It also has a link down here for APPR, uh, which is the AP railroad clothing armor, and it shows the default is no weave. This is a category for the mod slot for the ballistic weave. Uh, it won't even show up unless you have unlocked the quest. Uh, if you have an add-on that allows you to add and remove legendaries, you can right-click and go to Add. Change the keyword here. Oops, F2 it again. And use AP Legendary. Uh, that will show a legendary subsection if you have the mod that allows for legendary ads. Uh, from here, we have Armatures. This is what we have to reference up to our armor add-on up here. Uh, so we'll need the form ID, which in this case for the armor piece, since I'm editing armor, it's going to be 01000800. Um, I recommend right-clicking and edit instead of hitting F2. Sometimes it will freeze up. And now we see that it says Tutorial AA, which actually I wanted to rename to be Tutorial Armor AA. So now it shows the correct name down there. Uh, again here we have the race as human race. Uh, that will be the default race for it. Uh, it does not have a section in here for adding in the additional races. And that is what this uh, armor add-on section is for. Uh, down here under F name it has damage resistance. This is the amount of physical damage resistance. Uh, not for uh, like magic or uh, uh, radiation and uh, electrical. That would be under the resistances here. Uh, if you wanted to add in, actually on this piece we'll give it 10 damage resistance. Uh, for now, the OBTE section, the unknown, uh, we're going to totally ignore that. Uh, this will be used for adding in uh, additional uh, default modifications, which if you look at one of my other tutorials, I show how to make uh, this particular armor multiple colors. So you can actually specify different colors for the chest piece, different colors for the bodysuit, uh, and so forth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the gloves really quick, uh, which this is the one where we had the ground object. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Uh, again, we don't want that effect. And I totally forgot to change the name on the other one, so let's do that really fast. Full name will be the name of the item uh, that will be shown on the crafting station or if you do a help command. Uh, so this one's just going to, we're going to keep it very simple with tutorial armor. Actually we'll call it tutorial armor suit. And then the other one we're going to call tutorial gloves. Um, something I didn't point out was the PTRN transform. Um, you really don't need to worry about that. Uh, this is a, a kind of a math computation of how it's going to uh, affect the visual uh, model in the crafting and mod windows, uh, which also is affected by the object bounds. Um, I don't have a good way of telling you how to do the calculations to figure out what sizes you need there. Uh, some of it's just going to be trial and error. Um, now since we are doing a gloves piece, we do need to change our bipeds because those are all wrong. 
Um, I'm going to select none and just give it our hands again. And we'll go ahead and give this the ability to have legendaries also. Just because, why not? Uh, damage resistance on this we're going to have is, let's say, 3. Um, you can change the value of it as a vendor value uh, as well as the weight. Um, gloves aren't really that heavy, so we'll put that down as maybe 0.5. And the other one was kind of a bodysuit. Actually, that probably should be a little bit higher. Um, where were we? Whoops. Uh, we'll set that up to maybe five. Because we do have armor beyond just the suit. Anything else we missed? Um, oh, the armature. Got to set that for the gloves. So that's going to be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 8, 0, 3. Uh, the INRD which is showing up as unknown. This is for the dynamic naming. Um, that's going to be a whole different tutorial maybe later. Uh, you will need to have a mod that does like sorting um, to, that, that supports all the extra add-ons for the names. Uh, the built-in dynamic naming pretty much only works on the vault suit uh, and other specifics like the uh, leather armors and raiders and stuff like that. They, they are very specific pieces. They have to have certain keywords and whatnot. Uh, otherwise you'll need to add in the armor weapons keyword community resource or AWKCR um, and then as well as uh, the optional um, well, of course, we need a sorting add-on for that. And then you can also use the Armorsmith Extended add-on to add in different crafting benches and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to move on to the constructible object here. Uh, so first, we're going to be doing the gloves again. And we don't need to worry about the name uh, because that's going to be pulled from the actual piece up here. We do need to change what item is created. So we're going to edit that really quick. And this will be referencing the armor piece, not the armor add-on. Uh, so it's going to be armor, which is 0100801. Uh, telling it to, so once we created it, it's going to create that piece. Um, we can change our components. Um, right now it's cre it's requiring one adhesive, two leather, two cloth. Uh, let's see, the body piece. I think we're going to need maybe like five cloth. Two leather sounds good. Maybe three adhesive. Probably could throw some steel in there too, so we can right click and add. Um, since we know the name, uh, which is C Steel, nice and easy to remember. Uh, maybe make that four. So now to craft this, I'm going to need three adhesive, two leather, four steel, and five cloth. Um, conditions um, we can change that to be equal to one, and instead of modded item, has a keyword. We're going to change that to has a perk, which is way up here somewhere. You know, I'm just going to type it in. Has perk, and the keyword for the perk is going to be armorer. Uh, we'll just say level one armor. Keep it basic. Um, you, if you try to add in additional ones manually, make sure you change parameter 3 to minus 1. I've heard reports that it does strange things if you don't. Um, we also have to add on a workbench and a category, uh, otherwise this won't craft anything. So I have my references here. Um, the workbench that most people use for vanilla is going to be Workbench ChemLab, and the recipe will be under Utility. I discourage adding in additional um, recipe categories of your own. There are issues with the game engine. If you have too many uh, keywords, it causes issues. Uh, so we're going to head add in the workbench chem lab uh, for the crafting station. And then we're going to add in the category being utility. If you're going to be using Armorsmith Extended, you would use their appropriate uh, workbench and category names. They can be found on their mod pages. Since we're going to be using the same, um, most of these details for the gloves, I'm going to go ahead and control click on it to highlight both and compare so that I can easily just drag the details over. Um, yeah, we'll require armor for that one too. Uh, although the gloves probably won't need steel, so we're going to leave that as just adhesive, leather, and cloth. And that will be it. So let me just recheck, make sure I didn't miss anything. Actually, we can right-click and do a check for errors. 
it's always a good idea to do that in case you mistype something somewhere and has a legal reference. In this case it says checking for errors, everything's okay. So I'm, I'm still going to review it visually, make sure I didn't forget anything. Give me just one second. Everything looks pretty good. Yep. So we're going to go ahead and hit X so we can pop up the save box. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave it checked since we want to save it and hit OK. Okay, so there was something I missed uh, before I tried to load it up, and that was in our constructible when we were creating uh, and copying the armor and gloves. Uh, I told it to take the gloves and told it to make the wrong item. So we need to change that. Uh, for here, we're going to be using the gloves, so that's 01008004. Uh, so make sure you always double check your created objects when you copy references. Uh, and then that will be it. So we can test that one out in game. Okay, so we're back. Let me uh, load up our chemistry station. So we can show you down here in the utility section. We now have our tutorial armor and our gloves. Uh, the ground object, as you can see here, is being shown up. Uh, and that's why I put that in there. Otherwise, the default that we had was our vest. Uh, so now if I open up our armor, our sorry, craft. And then back out. Uh, if I were to drop them for some weird reason, uh, I have a black texture on our vault suit, but that's the vault suit uh, material. And then we have our gloves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them on so we can make sure that they actually do equip. And then we look okay. And it looks pretty good. We got our gloves and our bodysuit. So we're done. And that is how you make a basic uh, armor atom. What's going on?